Evil Genius back with you once again, and oh, that big old job speech is a coming. I'm taping this presentation on Monday night, and here in about, what, three days on Thursday, Barack Obama, the president, is going to give his big job speech. This is a big deal. This is a huge speech. This could be the, the turning point of everything in this economy, and I know because, you know, Obama thought it was so important that he thought the Republicans needed to, you know, uh, overlook their presidential debate they have going on so that he could give a speech on Wednesday night. Of course, that didn't end up working out, but uh, to, to hear Obama talk about this and uh, all the media, you would think this is just going to be the, the great speech that's going to save us all. Spare me. Uh, how many times have we seen this out of Obama uh, thinking that his orations are going to be the one thing that can deliver us to the promised land? I think we all know better. But at the risk of being one of these people that are criticized for just merely uh, criticizing Obama for something and not giving our own solution, not giving my own solutions, I'm actually going to give you a jobs plan tonight. I'm actually going to give you a couple of ideas that if we were to implement them as a nation, would, in my estimation, have a very positive impact on job growth in this country. And frankly, I think they're uh, quite a bit more realistic and quite a bit more effective than what Barack Obama is going to come up with Thursday night. So uh, by the time you see this, maybe Obama will have spoken, if you like. You can kind of compare what I'm going to say tonight to what Obama is going to say Thursday night. And kind of look at them side by side and see which one you think makes a little bit more sense logically in terms of what this country needs to do to spur job creation. Now, first of all, let me, uh, let me be very clear about one thing. I always get nervous when I hear any politician, Democrat, Republican, whatever. I get very nervous when I hear any politician talk about creating jobs. Because I do not believe it is the government's role to directly create jobs. I believe that's dangerous. I don't believe it works most of the time. And if it does work, it has the added effect of taking away our freedoms and radically changing the type of nation that we live in. Who knows, maybe that's what Obama wants anyway, I don't know. But uh, nevertheless, I, I would not want to live in a country where the government is the prime creator of jobs. Because as I've always said, if the government's going to give you something, they're always going to want something in return. So, frankly, I don't want the government giving me a job. I'm kind of scared about what they would ask for in return. So, I get nervous when I hear any Republican talk about direct job creation. However, while I've said that it's not the government's role to directly create jobs, I do believe it's the government's role to foster an environment in which it is favorable for the private sector to create jobs. And that's really the way I think we need to, to look at this job creation question. Uh, I want you to think about a uh, little ad campaign that we have in the St. Louis area. Let me describe this role briefly for some of you who will not be familiar with it, who don't live in this area. We have a casino in the St. Louis area called the Casino Queen. Now, I'm, this is not an advertisement for them. Frankly, I've never walked into the place myself, never been there. But they have a very successful ad campaign in the St. Louis area that they've ran for a number of years. And the ad campaign is based around the fact that according to whatever measurements are taken of such things, the Casino Queen has the loosest slots in America, the loosest slot machines in America. For those of you who are not familiar with casinos or slot machines, that means that the slot machines of the Casino Queen pay back more money to players than slot machines anywhere else in the St. Louis area or anywhere else in the country. So the idea behind the ad campaign is to tell people that they have the loosest slots, so therefore you as a player have a better chance of coming away with money, you have a better chance of turning a profit if you play at the Casino Queen as opposed to if you play anywhere else. Now, I don't know if that's, that's true or not. I'm not a slot player myself. Frankly, if you see me at a casino, you'll see me at a poker table and nowhere else. But nevertheless, the point is that that ad campaign has been very successful for a number of years, and it's very successful for a pretty obvious reason. That if people believe that they have a better chance of turning a profit in one place, then they will go to that one place as opposed to other places. That's what we're looking for. People want to spend their money, if they're going to spend it anyway, they want to spend that money in a place where they get the biggest possible return on investment and the most sure return on investment. That's the uh, idea behind that ad campaign, and it's been very successful. Well, I think we as a nation, when it comes to creating jobs, we need to undertake that similar idea behind that ad campaign and take that idea 
to the job creators, take that idea to the investors of this country and around the world for that matter. I think what we need to do as a nation, and this is the key thing, the key idea that all of the rest of this will flow out of, we must convince investors and we must convince the job creators, the wealthy, the corporate jet owners as Obama calls them, we must convince them that in the USA, conditions here are the most favorable to obtain a profit than they are anywhere else in the world. Now, can we truthfully say that in this day and age? I don't believe we can uh, as we sit here today, but I believe if we started making significant strides in this country towards making our nation the most favorable place for investment when compared to everywhere else in the world, that you would see job creation start to happen. Now, what do I mean when I, when I talk about the most favorable, uh, favorable place among the world? I'm talking about the idea that for the same amount of money that you could invest in India or China or Europe or Mexico or wherever you're going to invest it, for a same or similar amount of money, if you invested in that here in America, you would have a higher likelihood of turning a profit or maybe even a higher likelihood of turning a higher profit than you would overseas. Again, I don't think we're there yet, but we need to start looking at ways we can make strides towards creating that favorable investment environment here rather than that environment being overseas somewhere. So how do we do that? I think there's two major ways that you approach it. The first is to embrace the idea of deregulation. Now that is, is a very grand idea. It takes into account a lot of different things. But the bottom line is that the regulation we have in this nation, generally speaking, the regulation we have is what ties up an awful lot of the investment costs for most businesses. If you've ever heard of a, a gentleman I refer to many times in here, Walter E. Williams, he's, he, he's done a lot of speeches and, and written a lot of books where he refers to an example of a taxi cab company. You know, he gives the example of somebody who is out of work, but they have a car, and they think, hey, I'll just slap a sign on my car that says taxi, and I'll go and take people where they need to go today and maybe make some money out of that. Well, you can't do that in most places in this country because you have to go out and get all kinds of licensing, and you have to get all kinds of, of forms filled out and paperwork and government oversight. And, for example, in New York, it would take you at least $10,000 to get that taxi license. Well, how is that going to encourage people to start a taxi business? How is that going to encourage someone to take that risk? It's not because you have to invest so much money up front that there's a low likelihood that you're going to make that back or turn that big profit down the road. So we need to get rid of that mentality. We need, we need to get the government out of overseeing so many things and get the government out of licensing so many things. The government really has, when you think about it, no real need to know who is running what kind of business and how they're running their business and to make sure they do things a certain way. They really don't. I mean, look at this another way. People, look at, people talk about our inner cities and how desolate they are and, and, and how difficult it is to, to get anything going there, any traction there. But yet all of these inner cities have the cheapest real estate anywhere that you're going to find. They have buildings that are more inexpensive than, than they are elsewhere in their metro areas. It would seem to me that that would be a great place to invest money in startup businesses. After all, people say that the, the African-American workforce right now is, is, is unemployment. They have a, a higher unemployment than everybody else. Well, gee, you've got cheap property in the inner cities. You've got a workforce that's unemployed and ready to go. Why not go there and start investing money and build up some of these places? Oh, wait, you can't. Why can't you? Because if you go out and buy some of that cheap real estate or those cheap buildings in the inner city, well, now you have to retrofit those buildings and get them all up to code. And you have to put in, you know, a wheelchair ramp for the, uh, you know, for the National the, the, the Disabilities Act and all that kind of thing. You have to invest so much money to satisfy what the government wants out of your business before you even open your doors that it becomes cost prohibitive to actually entertain the idea of opening a business. Only the established businesses can do it. You and I have a very tough time living the American dream and starting a business from scratch because we have to invest so much in crap that really means nothing other than to satisfy the government. So if you took out most of those hoops that the government makes you jump through to start a business, oh, would you see businesses start to pop up, and that would create jobs. 
Think about another example. And this is one that's been in the news a lot lately. Michelle Bachman and a few other people have talked about uh, really cutting or even outright, outright eliminating the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. Magnificent idea in my estimation. And of course the Democrats are screaming about it and talking about, oh, you'll kill off all kinds of birds and trees and whatever else. But think about something for a second. Imagine, to quote John Lennon, one of the left's favorite singers, imagine what would happen if we could eliminate, say, 80% of the environmental regulations that we have out there. What would happen? Well, I would suspect and I would guess and I would surmise that if we eliminated 80% of the environmental regulations we have out there today, that we would spur on an economic boom in this nation that would be far beyond what anybody's seen in the last couple of generations. We would be in good shape. We would have the next great boom in American history if we got rid of our environmental regulations, at least the vast majority of them. And in fact, it would, that, would, that, would, that would help us on two levels. First of all, it would make it cheaper and easier to invest money to expand and to create jobs in this country, but it would also put us in a major advantage versus Europe and versus Asia and versus the rest of the world because as badly as we in this nation have been blinded by the idea of global warming and climate change and all the environmental bullshit, as badly as we've been blinded by that, the rest of the world has invested even more in it. They're really convinced of that crap. So if we got rid of our environmental regulations, at least in the short term, we would have a tremendous advantage over the rest of the world in getting investment over here. Because all of these job creators, all of these people that have money, all of these people that want to start businesses would see, hey, wait a second, I don't have to deal with carbon footprints and, and taxes for carbon taxes and things like that, and environmental regulations. I don't have to make that investment in America, or I do have to make it in Europe, or where I do have to make it in some parts of Asia. Now I'm going to go back to the United States. So we would put ourselves at a massive advantage versus the rest of the world if we got rid of most of our environmental regulations. It goes back to what I said right at the top. We would be able to truthfully at that point tell investors here or wherever else that you can invest a little bit less money here in America and have a higher likelihood of getting a substantial return on that investment versus what the likelihood you would have elsewhere. That will create jobs. That will spur job creation. That's what we need. Secondly, we go on to taxation, the other thing that I think we really need to address. Now, taxation has been in the forefront of every political debate for the last year, it would seem like. And yes, Barack Obama is hell-bent on taxing the rich and nothing else. I think it's the only thing he wants to do in this presidency. I don't know if it's a if, if it's a compulsion with him, I don't know if he's got a hatred of the rich. I don't know what the motivations are, but he wants to tax the hell out of the rich. He wants to punish the rich. He wants to bring them to justice in his perverted concept of the idea. He wants them to pay their fair share when in reality they're already paying more than their fair share. You want people to pay, pay their fair share, go after the poor. That's another, another discussion, another story. But in terms of creating jobs, if we can make some significant changes to our corporate tax rate. Now I've heard some of the presidential candidates like Herman Cain talk about reducing the, the corporate tax rate or even outright eliminating it for a couple of years. I think it should be out eliminated permanently myself, but that's, a, that's another story altogether. But if we can make some significant changes to the corporate tax rate, cap it at a certain level, or eliminate it for a certain period of time, that would enable people to realize, hey, not only can I invest money in America and have a favorable chance for a return on, on investment, but I'm going to get to keep more of what I make? Well, why wouldn't you create jobs in America then? If you're going to invest money somewhere, America suddenly becomes a much more favorable place to invest that money, and that's where we need to be. So yes, let's go ahead and let's make some changes to our corporate tax rate. Let's cap it. Let's reduce it. Maybe let's eliminate it. But I'll guarantee you, you won't hear Barack Obama talk about that Thursday night. You'll hear some people talk about it Wednesday night at the Republican debate, where people will talk about some real solutions and some, some real issues. You won't hear that out of Obama on Thursday, I'll guarantee it. How about this? Let's reduce or eliminate all capital gains taxes. 
So that you and I, when we invest in the stock market or we have our 401k, maybe if, you know, gee, maybe if we didn't have to pay taxes on that and whatever we made we could keep, maybe we'd invest a little bit more. Hey, there you go. Now we're spraying more job creation. You see, the difference here is in understanding who creates the jobs. For all of Obama's talk about helping the poor and helping the disenfranchised and doing the Sally Strobis commercial that he always does, he fails to realize that by and large, those aren't the people that create jobs. Those are the people that just, you know, kind of subsist off of government programs and take from the system without contributing anything to it. They're the ones, 50% of them, that don't even pay taxes. If you want to create jobs, you have to make a favorable environment for those who could potentially invest in that job creation to be able to invest and have a high likelihood of a return on investment. A likelihood that is comparable or better than the likelihood they have elsewhere in the world. That's what we need to do. And part of that could be reducing the amount of taxation they have to pay on their profits or even eliminating it outright, either in the short term or permanently. If you do that, if you reform taxes in that manner, oh, you will see money pour into this country. If you go back and deregulate a lot of the industries and get the government out of all but the most necessary tasks, again, you will see money flow into this country. Everybody bitches and complains about jobs leaving this country for overseas, but why do they leave this country for overseas? They leave this country for overseas because you've got to spend less on the labor over there and you're not regulated as much. Period. We can cut the whole discussion down to that. So if we are going to compete on a global stage, if we are going to compete with other countries for investment, we are going to have to be competitive with them in that regard. So hey, deregulate all the industries you can, get rid of the environmental regulations, then we can undercut the hell out of the rest of the world, repair our taxation where people can keep the money they make on that investment, and you'll see people invest here. The bottom line is this. In order to create jobs in this country, we must make it as easy as possible to invest in America. And we must make it as likely as possible for those investors to profit at a significant level. If we do that, everybody wins. Well, everybody except those politicians whose careers are based on keeping people poor and stupid and dependent on the government. They'll lose. But all the rest of us, the majority of us in this world, will win. So there's my jobs plan. Let's see what Barack's is on Thursday night. This is America's Evil Genius. We'll see you next week.